going on a little filming trip today. I'm driving out to the coast because I'm filming a video about oceanic fragrances. Never been to this place. I've been close to it. I think it should be a nice, interesting, rocky coastline. I've checked it out on Google Maps. Looks pretty good. It's over an hour away, so fingers crossed it's a good location for filming. Let's check it out. It is so gorgeous and sunny out there right now that I've even had to apply sun cream. It smells like summer right now. I love it. The sea. We found the sea. I found the ocean. Unfortunately, it seems fairly quiet. I'm not filming on there, but that's a backup because there's no one currently on there. That would be perfect. And if I look around, it's not too busy. So hopefully we'll find a good spot. Two reasons I love marine oceanic fragrances so much. I love being by the ocean. I have many happy memories. So anything that reminds me of that and evokes an emotional response instantly gets a thumbs up. The other reason is oceanic scents just happen to be bright, invigorating and mass appealing. So many reasons to enjoy these types of fragrances. Okay, here are 10 from my collection that I enjoy the most. Okay, the first one is a very popular designer fragrance. It takes the ocean, puts it in a bottle, adds some sex appeal. So what you get washing up on shore from Giorgio Armani is Acqua di Gio Profumo. In this, there's a refreshing citrus combined with slightly salty sea notes in the opening. Then it's joined by sophisticated aromatic herbal notes. What takes this to another level for me is the incense. Not something I associate with the sea, but it partners with the sea notes so well. Something about incense for me that has a mysterious quality. So this is the olfactory equivalent of sitting in a dimly lit oceanside inn, listening to a grizzled old sailor telling mysterious tales of his voyages. A bit like that scene in Jaws. But the only thing this one is killing is the ladies. So if you want to smell like the mysteries of the ocean and be a bit of a lady killer, let this one sink its teeth into you and drag you off to the murky depths. So you can hopefully find some hot mermaids or just go clubbing. Next up is a scent from Art de Parfum. This one makes me grin from ear to ear every time I smell it. It's called Le Joker. Funny that. This scent is superb. So superb, in fact, it was a gold winner at the Pure Beauty Awards last year. It's bright and invigorating, yet at the same time, it has a smokiness, which makes it feel dark and dangerous. And for me, it's this contrast that gives the scent a mischievous, playful character. Blended in with all that is a salty ambergris that gives off a slightly dirty seaweed accord that reminds me a little bit of Tom Ford's Oud Mineral. The Joker is just a riot of a fragrance. If you want to portray anarchy and charm in equal measure and also be reminded of a dark and stormy ocean, give it a try. I've already mentioned this next one. It's a beauty from Tom Ford. Now, sadly, discontinued Oud Mineral. Walking along a rocky coastline, smelling the saltiness of the sea, slippy green seaweed on the rocks, salt covered neoprene wetsuits I used to wear when snorkeling. Add to all that, that magic Tom Ford sexiness, and what you have is quite an artistic fragrance that when warmed up by the skin becomes this oceanic weapon of seduction. I like to call it the torpedo. Not really, I, I just made that up, but I quite like it. Tom Ford torpedo blows anything else out the water. This next one is a little less creative, but it's still a sexy little siren from Dolce & Gabbana. It's light blue or intense. This is fruity, musky and sea salty. It's also bright, uplifting and invigorating. All that summertime good stuff. Makes me think of clear blue waters somewhere in the Mediterranean, so not quite these stormy oceans I'm sitting next to right now. 
I'm sitting on a cool oceanside bar, drinking a cocktail without a care in the world. For me, this has good time holiday vibes. It's a straightforward, easy to wear, mass appealing scent that plays all the right notes in the right order. Spray this and I can absolutely guarantee you, you will be smelling of Dolce & Gabbana's light blue O Intense. And that, my friends, is a very, very good thing indeed. As good as light blue is, if you're looking for something with a bit more gravitas, a bit more weight, a bit more sophisticated, you might want to look at Riviera Lazuli from Atelier des Ors. This opens with citrus and a bit of greenness, and then you get herbs, fur, and incense, and it has this depth and richness that make it a very sensual type of scent. And there's also a bit of creaminess, which just adds even more to its inviting nature. Makes me think of driving with the top down, ocean on one side, green pine trees on the other, this bottle has something in it, not gold flakes, well it does have gold flakes, but something else, a message. And that message is, I am sexy, classy and confident. Now that is a message in a bottle I am definitely here for. Going back to fun and youthful, this is one of the most fun and youthful scents I own from Paco Rabanne, it's Invictus Aqua. As you can see, this is the first formulation from 2016. The one you buy now doesn't have the attention-grabbing yuzu note that this does, but it's still a very good fragrance. This just has the fun factor from that bubblegummy accord of Invictus, but the C notes balance out the sweetness, so Aqua smells a bit more refined and classy. Don't get me wrong, still tons of fun and will certainly please the crowds. This is a fun oceanic party scent that also manages to be quite cool and collected. And don't worry about 2018 not being as good as 2016. 2018 will do you just fine. It's a good fragrance. But if you and I end up at the same party and you're wearing 2018 and I'm wearing 2016, I can take great delight in knowing I'll smell better. Always honesty on this channel. We're going from a party at a beachside shack to a cool oceanside cocktail lounge with Roger Parfum's Oceania. I'd describe this as fruity floral. And as always with Roger Parfum's, the blend is impeccably smooth. This sparkles and shimmers like the sunlight dancing on gentle ocean waves. It doesn't have salty sea notes, so it doesn't smell literally like the ocean, like some of the others in the list, but rather it evokes the feeling of warm, inviting, calm sea. Extremely refined and sophisticated scent that is an absolute dream to wear in the summer heat. If you want to sparkle like the ocean and also smell like the classiest person in the room, take a plunge into Oceania. Next up is Aaron Terence Hughes' take on a blue oceanic scent. It's called Odyssey. This is part of the line where Aaron works with cheaper synthetic materials which allow him to significantly bring the cost down. It's a great example of how synthetics can smell great. Synthetics aren't bad, nearly all fragrances use them to some degree and often they can improve a fragrance. So Odyssey is bright and fruity with a very smooth musky base. Almost smells like there's a bit of coconut because they get a fun, very mass appealing tropical sort of vibe. If you want something from Aaron that is fun, super easy to wear, likely to elicit compliments and doesn't cost too much, this one might be for you. It's not Homer's, it's Aaron's and I love it. Okay, this one just had to be in here. It doesn't smell like the ocean, but it's damn fine stuff that I wouldn't mind swimming in. Bleu de Chanel. This is just so well put together by Jacques Polge. Citrus, woods and incense combine to create a high quality, mass appealing, sophisticated scent that really kicked off the blue fragrance craze. Actually, it kind of does make me think of the ocean because I made a video about this by the ocean in Portugal, so I have great memories of that. If you're looking for a fragrance that has the quality, has the class and is pretty much universally enjoyed by everyone, it might be time for you to try blue. The final one is one of the best and most unique oceanic fragrances I've ever smelled. From Sarah Baker, it's Atlant.
It has a beautifully rounded fruity opening that blends seamlessly with a salty marine accord. I don't think it's that easy to come up with unique citrus marine scents because the parameters in which to work must be quite narrow, but here it's been done so superbly well. It manages to be creative and different while still being very easy to wear and mass appealing. If you want something that is bright and uplifting, something that reminds you of the ocean, something that smells unique, something that makes you smell fantastic, I think Atlant ticks all the boxes. Okay, there you go, 10 of my favorite oceanic fragrances. I think I better start wrapping up this video because the tide's coming in, it's getting closer and closer. It's almost got me a couple of times. If I'm not careful, I'll get swallowed up by the North Sea. So let me know what you thought of my 10 oceanic fragrances. Do you like oceanic fragrances? Let me know what your favorites are. I hope you enjoyed this appropriate location. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, keep tuning into FM, keep smelling good, and I'll see you in the next one.